Hi there. Understanding how to read and save colors is a key skill for success in many robotics competitions. In this video, I'll show several reliable methods for detecting colors using Spike Prime Scratch Programming. And more importantly, how to avoid common mistakes like wrong or missed colors. We'll start with the basics, saving colors and variables, and then move on to using lists, which offer more flexibility and power for storing multiple color values. I'll also demonstrate how your robot can detect colors while driving past objects. This uses a broadcast command to save each one without needing to stop. Whether you're building for speed or precision, these techniques will help make your robot smarter and your code more efficient. Okay, let's get started. This robot has a light sensor at the front and one at the side to demonstrate the possibilities. A competition robot would normally have only one sensor. First, let's drive up to a marker, save the color and return to the start. Here is the coding to do this. I have made five variables we will use to save colors. They are set to zero in the init my block at the start of the program. The my block read color front is then executed. We first line follow for 44 centimeters, which takes the robot up to the marker and stops. Without the short wait, the sensor did not always see the color. Here we set the variable marker 5 to the color code of sensor D at the front. We then reverse back to the starting point with a your follower. We see that the variable marker 5 has been set to 6, which is the color code for green. Here is a quick look at the my block for the gyro your follower and for the line follower, which uses two light sensors. If we want to save the color as text and confirm it on the robot's display, this my block will do it for us. We set marker 5 to the color seen by the sensor and display a letter on the hub. Now let's move on to saving more than one color. Here we record the four markers as we drive past and grab the one at the end as well. The color codes of all five markers have been saved in variables marker 1 to marker 5. To do this, I have first modified the line follower to move until the color code of the sensor on the side is not minus one, which is the code for no color seen. I then set the variable marker one to the color code seen by the sensor. Now that we have located and saved a color, we have to move on until we are no longer sensing the color. This is done by using a my block, which moves until no color is seen. We can then move on and look for the next marker. Using these my blocks, we can save the color codes of all four markers. We don't need to stop the robot between the markers. We can drive past using either line following as shown or your following in the same way. To also save the fifth marker, we can make a new line follow my block, which moves the robot until the front sensor sees a color. This can then be added to the main program. Now let's see how to save the color codes of markers 1 to 4 in the list. First, go to variables, click on make a list and give the list a name. You then have the list commands available. Here is the program using four variables to save the color codes. On the right, we can see the four saved codes and the empty list we created. Here is the program to save the four color codes in a list. The four list items are displayed here. The variables were not used, so they remain at zero. Note that we have to delete any old values in the list before using it. Using the add command adds items to the end of the list. So if we want to be a bit fancy, we can use a repeat four times function to make a shorter my block. The end result should hopefully be the same. Once we have the color codes in the list, we have all the list commands available to manipulate the data. The method of saving colors we have just looked at uses the colored markers for navigation. The robot moves until it sees a color, saves it, then looks for the next one. Another approach is to navigate independently and use a broadcast to read the colors. A broadcast is a separate program which runs at the same time as the main program. Here with the main program, we ramp up the speed in the first 15 centimeters then hold the speed for 50 centimeters and finally slow down over 15 centimeters. After the first ramp, 
Get Codes is broadcast. This starts the independent program which saves the colours. When the four colours have been saved, the broadcast terminates. The colours are saved in the same way we have already seen. To make a broadcast, click on Events and drag When I Receive onto the screen. Click to select an existing broadcast or click on New Message to create one. You can then program the broadcast. To stop a broadcast, add Stop This Static from the control menu. To start a broadcast from the main program, use the broadcast command. As for the previous example, we can program the four color saves separately or use the repeat four times function for a more compact solution. This robot combines navigating with saving colors. It moves until it detects the blue marker and saves the color. It continues, finds two more markers and saves them as well. After the turn, it finds the yellow marker and continues until it detects the final marker where it stops. It does not need to detect the blue marker as the color will be the color missing from the group of four markers. Here we see the complete program with the color codes saved in the list. The my block, your color found, is a your follower which moves until sensor F sees a color and then saves it. Your no color continues until the color is no longer seen. Your color found is a your follower which continues until a color is found. It then drops out of the repeat until command and adds the color to the list. Your distance moves on further by the distance set in the offset parameter. Your no color F is a your follower which continues until no color is seen by sensor F. If required, it will continue for the distance set in parameter offset. These my blocks make it possible to navigate from marker to marker and at the same time save the marker colors in the list. There are various possibilities for problems with reading colors. For example, with this strategy, the sensor might see the yellow object here. There are two ways of dealing with this. You could move a defined distance before looking for the color, so you simply avoid it. Or, if the sensor always sees the color, you could include it in your strategy by moving until the sensor sees it and then move on. With some lighting conditions, the sensor can give a false color. Also, if a color marker is too far from a sensor, the color sensing is intermittent, giving a double detection. Using lists, you can improve this. If the colors we are looking for are all different, we can modify the your follow my block your color found to only add colors which are not already in the list. This will avoid adding the same color twice and we no longer need the my block your no color found. We now have the possibility to avoid saving false color codes by adding them to the list in the init my block. I usually add minus one, zero and one. We then just ignore the first three items in the list and save the marker colors from item four onwards. With the situation where the first marker can have any color and a group of four markers has one of each color, the solution is to save the first marker in a variable and the group in a list. Another way to improve color saving is to make a list of the colors we still want and remove them from the list once they are found. Here is the new list named Colors Wanted. We add the color codes we need in the init my word at the program start. We can use this idea with a broadcast, which we will start after the speed ramp as before. When the broadcast starts, we wait until the sensor detects a color in the Colors Wanted list. The color is saved in variable color found and added to the color codes list. Finally, it is deleted from the Colors Wanted list. Here we carry out this procedure twice to save two colors. The first two color codes are saved in the color codes list and they have been removed from colors wanted. Variable color found is still set to the last color. To read all four colors, we can use a repeat four times command, which gives the results shown. The color wanted list is now empty. Here, the two green markers simulate an intermittent sensor signal. The second marker is ignored as the color has been removed from colors wanted. With a modified version of your color found, we can use this technique to navigate from marker to marker as before. We your follow 
until the sensor sees a color in the colors wanted list. We then add the color found to the color codes list and delete it from the colors wanted list. In the special case of the first marker having any color, followed by four markers each with a different color, we can deal with this by adding the color of the first marker back into the colors wanted list. The end result is shown here. Item one of color codes is the blue marker at the start. Items two, three, and four are the three markers in the group we could read. The remaining color in colors wanted is the green marker we couldn't read. Well, I think that's enough for now. It's a bit complicated, but I think using the colors wanted list is a robust method to read and save colors. Let me know if you try it. Please like and subscribe. The attached playlist has other topics that you might find interesting.